when I first met Zaha, I knew that she was exceptional. So fascinating, he said, because she, for the first time, started to show sketches, doodles she had never shown before. Oh, Hadid was one of the most innovative and influential architects of our time. We're imagining entirely new scenarios for cities. There are no boundaries in the way between art and architecture and design. She was the first woman to receive both the Reba Royal Gold Medal and the Pritzker Prize. It was brilliant. Zaha Hadid is an Iraqi architect that inspired artists and creators around the world through her unique and modern idea of architecture. She paved the way for a new concept of design. Hadid gained worldwide recognition in 1983 with her many award-winning structures. She proved that architecture is an art of creativity, not similarity. Hadid was born in Baghdad, Iraq in 1950 into a wealthy family, her dad a politician and her mom an artist. Hadid's family took a particular interest in traveling, so Zaha received a multicultural international education at boarding schools in Switzerland and England. Zaha definitely had an advantage of being brought up in a wealthy family. She was able to travel the world and see the different kinds of architecture. During her childhood, Baghdad was experiencing a period of prosperity for the government. They decided to modernize their architecture around the city. Zaha was able to see the complexion of the city change and the rise of some amazing buildings during her childhood, which may have sparked her interest in architecture. Zaha then studied mathematics at the American University of Beirut before moving to London in 1972 to attend the Architectural Association School where she received the Diploma Prize in 1977. There she met the architect Ilya Zanglis. Rather than uh, more than kind of student, teacher-student relationship, it was more, Zaha for me was more like, like a daughter. And Rem Koulis with whom she would collaborate with as a partner in the Office of Metropolitan Architecture. Coolis encouraged her boldness and insisted that she learn to draw. Hadid spent hours each day mastering her techniques. Ilya and Rem helped shape Zaha into the architect known today. As a woman in Iraq, there was not a moment that, that I would not pursue a career. And many of my contemporaries in Iraq actually went into architecture, medicine, uh, you know, sciences. It was not seen uh, as a, a strange thing. It was actually stranger when I came to Britain that everybody said, oh my God, a woman architect. Uh, there it wasn't so strange. Hadid then established her own architecture firm, Zaha Hadid Architects, in 1979. I was a woman. I did strange stuff. I think they're all together intertwined. But there was definitely has been, and I still remain, it's much better now. There's a definite stigma to about the woman thing. In the last 10 years, there's been a very, I think, ambitious project by many cities. Zaha stuck out for most other architects, because at this time, the industry was predominantly male, and her idea of architecture wasn't normal. She enjoyed making every element of design different in all her structures, and she created curves that nobody had ever seen in buildings before. To be accepted as a, an architect, I think is, I'm not sure it's fully done. Not here, not in this country. I'm still considered to be on the margin. You know, despite all these things. And I don't mind being on the edge, actually. It's a good place to be. You know, there was an obsession with historicism, a vernacular, a postmodern. So the idea of new was almost alien. Although her firm had been alive for a few years, Hadid gained international recognition in 1983 with her design for The Peak, a skyscraper in Hong Kong. Because of Zaha Hadid, architects and other artists are truly creating and producing what they want to make, not what the status quo tells them they should do. People like Pascal Sablon, an award-winning architect and mentor in New York City, providing a resounding voice for the issue facing women architects and architects of color. And people like Chris Ann Marie Spencer, a project architect at Wheeler Kearns Architects, leading countless nonprofits through the design process, are following in Zaha Hadid's footsteps to making architecture even greater. Hadid has won countless numbers of awards in her career time. I would consider the three most significant ones to be the Pritzker Architecture Prize, the UK Sterling Prize, and a royal gold medal in her own right. The Pritzker Architecture Prize is awarded to an architect whose work demonstrates those qualities of talent, vision, and commitment which has produced consistent and significant contributions to humanity through the art of architecture. The award consists of $100,000 and a bronze medallion. Zaha Hadid, of course, is one of the great architects of our time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight it is the footsteps of Zaha Hadid that are heard in the Hermitage Halls. Zaha, thank you very much. Zaha, could you come up? It's a delicious pleasure to receive this very special award. I would like to take this moment as an opportunity, I guess long overdue, to thank my family, my friends, teachers, students, collaborators, and clients who supported me for so many years, who share my passion for architecture, and who continue to encourage me in my ambitions. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. The UK Sterling Prize recognizes the architects of the building that has made the greatest contribution to the evolution of architecture in the past year. Zaha Hadid was announced as the winner of the prestigious Reba Sterling Prize for her design of the Evelyn Grace Academy in London. The Royal Gold Medal is approved personally by Her Majesty the Queen and is given to a person or group of people who have had a significant influence either directly or indirectly on the advancement of architecture. In 2004, she became the first woman to win a Pritzker Architecture Prize and earlier this year, she collected the gold medal from the Royal Institute of British Architects. It's also fantastic that I'm acknowledged for work which was really not mainstream was uh, very deliberately trying to question all the things that people took, kind of took for granted and to kind of weave, weave a way through kind of a new urban life in the city which, uh, which was to do with kind of connectivity and uh, malleability and accessibility. Dame Zaha Hadid, who died today suddenly at the age of 65, created some of the world's greatest and most imaginative architecture. Zaha Hadid has died of a heart attack in Miami at the age of 65. Zaha was a genius. She was doing work that nobody else conceived of, never mind figured out how to build. Zaha was a pioneer. And she was a star in the firmament of ideas and of poetry. And when, once a star goes out, there is really no one to replace it. She was unique. There are very few people in the world who are known by one name. And, you know, anywhere in the world you can talk about Zaha. Zaha's historical significance, I think, is, if anything, has been underestimated. She's been a monumental innovator, radically expanding the degrees of freedom one has as a composer in space. Who knows what extraordinary creative things might have come out of that imagination if it had another one or two decades to, to keep producing things. While I was at the AA, there was this sense that this was somebody who was going to be a great architect. The AA was this just hotbed of radical thinking. And yet she was the one who, I think, most successfully exported those ideas and developed it into a language that, that could then be kind of understood. I started studying architecture in 1993. And of course, like stumble upon uh, Zaha's paintings. What she managed to do, which is so amazing, is to actually take this entire universe that seemed uh, impossible and unbuildable and completely sort of changing our understanding of what's fantasy and what's reality. The very essence of Zaha was a real romantic, very sensitive, but a warrior too. And that's how I like to remember her.